Live from the Grand Hotel in Minot, North Dakota, this is Good Night Live! Our guest tonight is Mark Strutrude, with music by Danny Savage. And now, your host of Good Night Live, Jake Thrillkin! You guys are a beautiful audience. You look so familiar. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. All right. Good night, Minot, and welcome to Good Night Live. We are so happy to be here with all you folks, and we are honored to be a part of the Sirs Valley Animal Shelter Annual Gala Fundraiser. They do, thank you, they do such important work and you have all helped them fund that work in a big, big way tonight. Give yourselves a round of applause. Is it gala or gala? Jerry's out. Whichever? Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll go with gala. Gala's fine. All right. So we are really happy to be part of this fantastic event tonight. And everyone at the Sirs Valley Animal Shelter has been great to work with. And the Good Night Live crew is, well, we've learned a lot about how nonprofit organizations work. For example, how many Sirs Valley Animal Shelter board members does it take to change a light bulb? How many? Let's try it again. How, How many? many? Thank you. Eight. One to change the light bulb, and seven to organize a fundraiser to pay for a light bulb. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, you guys like that one? We got more. <laughs> what do you get when you cross a program director, a volunteer manager, and a janitor? Service Valley Animal Shelter Executive Director Shelby Waters, everyone. <laughs> She's working hard tonight. Yeah. Okay, all right. Enough with all the lame jokes. Did you all win the stuff that you wanted at the silent auction? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's good for you. Oh, a lot of ooze out there. Yeah. Right you know, I was kind of wondering, if you're willing to pay more than anybody else, do you really win anything at the silent auction? <laughs> You win charity. Yeah. I will say I walked through the silent auction tonight and I didn't see any 50% off coupons for video magic. <laughs> Too soon? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, all right, all right. So, you know, good for you, you got what you wanted, but I just gotta say, what's more passive aggressive than a silent auction? I mean, it's the perfect way to knife each other in the back while trying to still be North Dakota nice. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and hey, I, you know, I really do have some empathy for, you know, all the work that nonprofits do. I mean, I've been hosting Good Night Live since November of 2019, and people love us. We've sold out every show, and hell, my name's on the damn marquee back here. But I finally got a look at the books for our first season of Good Night Live, and hell, turns out I work for a nonprofit too. <laughs> but seriously. The Sirs Valley Animal Shelter has some great programs, one of them being rescue readers. I mean, it is super cool to have kids come in and read to the animals. But I gotta question the effectiveness of the program. Why is that? Well, to date, not one single dog has learned how to read. <laughs> We're pretty sure the cats have learned to read, though, and that they're silently plotting world domination. Yeah. Like we do every night, Pinky. Mm -hmm. Speaking of cats, researchers at UCLA analyzed more than 500 pet owners and they concluded that crazy cat ladies do not exist. Yeah. They also proved that not all cat owners are witches. So Not all of them. Some of them are witches. Some, some yes, probably are. Yes. So yeah. basically, folks, cat ladies aren't actually a thing. But you can still smell one, and when you know, you still know one when you smell one. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> but hey, you guys are all such a wonderful audience tonight, and we know everyone out there is an animal lover. I mean, me too, me too. I love my dog. Um, but, you know, I'm not sure about this whole man's best friend thing. I mean, Miles tells me that he's my best friend all the time, but he would never look me straight in the eye while he took a shit on my carpet. Yeah, you were definitely in the other room when that happened. Yeah. So, let's take a look at what's in the news lately. 
Baseball is back. Hey, very exciting. Yeah. You know, and that's probably the only reason for grown-ups to run around wearing ball caps, pretending they don't know what the rules are or who won. And for the 76% of us who voted for Trump, my writing team tells me that was a joke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, speaking of politics, yeah, I was thinking that this is the first show where we don't have an Ole Larson joke. No. Yeah. You you know, and you're about to move into his district. Right. Other than the fact that he just exists. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. So a recent <laughs> yeah. So a recent study ranks North Dakota 49th among the 50 states in innovation. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's. A... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Reaction. Yeah. Almost last. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. We're in front of Wyoming. We're not last. Yep. Not Finally. last. She faxed over a message that said "not last." Right. <laughs> so. You know, we're 49th among the 50 states in innovation. But a lot of people say when you come to North Dakota, it's like stepping back in time 20 years. And now there's scientific proof. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wah, wah, wah. There was a study. <laughs> All right. A new Utah law requires biological fathers to pay half of a woman's out-of-pocket pregnancy costs. Yeah, it sounds fair. But a lot of Utah men are complaining. Yeah, I mean, if, you have, if you've got three or four of your wives pregnant at the same time, that quickly can add up to the cost of a full pregnancy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, folks. It gets expensive. It, you know, I don't know, but you would. I've heard, I've heard it gets expensive. <laughs> right. All right, and now we here at Goodnight Live are once again thrilled to bring you a word from our new sponsor, Prairie Legend Products. You don't know about them, obviously. No, they've never heard. Of, <laughs> you've never heard of Prairie Legend Products? These products are the pride of the prairie. Prairie Legend Products are designed for your Midwestern lifestyle and palate. If you want your home, kitchen, backyard, lake cabin, pontoon, pickup truck, sex life to be truly legendarily Midwestern, you need PLP. First up tonight, the Prairie Wave Companion. Here in the Midwest, the two-finger wave is damn near legally required. It only takes one missed wave, and you're screwed. <laughs> say, you're out, say you're out running errands. You catch the first two waves, you know, Bill out on County Road 19, Jerry on the north side of 83. But then, you take your eyes off the road just for a few minutes, and maybe, maybe you got to change the radio station because that Miles Barkham Henhouse album came on. Or, you know, maybe the dog crawled on, into your lap and spilled your beer all over. But then all of a sudden... Again? Yes, again. Jeez. But then all of a sudden, Todd has given you the stink eye at Bowling League because you didn't wave to him on the bypass. Well, here at Prairie Legend Products, we know how important it is to get every wave in. So we created the Prairie Wave Companion. Fashioned in the classic two-finger salute, this beauty will attach directly to your steering wheel. Durable and long-lasting and made with only the finest Bakken Petroleum products. And hey, it's adjustable, so it fits on everything from the family sedan to the one-ton to the side-by-side. -side. Get your Prairie Wave Companion now because you don't need to take any of that shit from Todd. <laughs> Our next PLP product is the Grassmaster 3000. Do you want to spend less time lawn mowing and more time drinking beer on your summer weekends? Yes. Does it drive you crazy when your white New Balances get mucked up doing yard work? Yes. And are you tired of your lazy teenage son doing a half-assed job mowing the lawn? Absolutely. Well, then throw your teenage son the fuck away. You need... <laughs> Prairie Legend Products Grassmaster 3000. The Grassmaster is guaranteed to make you the king of the neighborhood. This diesel-powered four-wheel drive beauty can do everything your lazy teenage son will not. 
The Grassmaster comes equipped with a backup camera, satellite radio, enclosed cab with AC, GPS, laser-guided lane sensing, and a built-in and a built-in beer cooler. This thing smells flex fuel and pukes. <laughs> Now available with these fantastic attachments, 48-inch spike aerator, custom combine grass baler, six-power tow-behind leaf and lawn vacuum, and our patented Kid Be Gone Anhydrous Ammonia Sprayer. <laughs> One whiff of Kid Be Gone Anhydrous, and you'll keep those bratty little neighborhood kids off your lawn for good. Yeah. All right, not a lot of people mow the lawn. <laughs> They're going to after yeah. this. Be the king of the neighborhood. Once they get the Grassmaster 3000, they're on. So next up, we here at Goodnight Live are really excited to introduce a whole new line of Prairie Legend products here tonight. Yes. And we know every single one of you in this pet-loving audience will be dying to get your hands on these. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you, for the first time anywhere, Prairie Legend Pet Products. Yeah, we can cheer for that. I know it's hard to cheer before you know what you're getting. At PLP, we have a complete line of wholesome, nutritious, and well-balanced pet foods. Our pet food will keep your dogs hunting and your cats purring. Don't settle for those national brands when you can give your pets healthy, all-natural, Midwest goodness. For all you dog lovers out there, Prairie Dog Chow. Made from locally harvested, <laughs> free-range, grass-fed prairie dogs. Miles, you add some. What did you think? It's not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Prairie Dog Chow has everything your dog needs to get up off the couch and out chase and tail. With no artificial colors or flavors, this is the perfect food for all of your dog's lifestyle. With each bite, your dog is transported to majestic Medora, where he feels the cool breeze ruffling his fur, and Prairie Dogs flee in terror. Put the Prairie back in your dog. Prairie dog chow, because your dog will eat anything. Oh, and don't worry. If you're a cat person, we've got you covered too. Luda Friskies. Yeah. Miles, any taste? They look so hungry. Look at them. They're so, they want that Luda Frisk so bad. Miles, any taste comments on this one, or you pass that one Ludafi by? I spent enough time at the Hoost Fest. I've had. You some, feel like you've I've had Ludafriskies? Had some Ludafisk. <laughs> right. And meatball dinners and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Ludafriskies. Our Viking ancestors ate a legendary dried fish to stay healthy and strong when they made long voyages across the Atlantic to rape, pillage, and conquer. <laughs> well, let me tell you, folks, they had to keep their warrior cats just as healthy. And that's why they fed them Ludafriskies. This ancient recipe has been fiercely guarded and is now made with love by your grandma and all the other Lutheran church ladies in the basement. <laughs> Luda Friskies, feed your cat like a Nordic warrior. <laughs> and here at PLP, we know that you treat your pets just like one of the family. And as family, you want them to have the finest dining experience, complete with condiments. So, with a little help from our friends at the Surus Valley Animal Shelter, we've developed Surus Valley Ranch. <laughs> well, that's right. The condiment no proper Midwestern table is complete without. Ranch dressing is now available for your pets. Made from only the finest industrial strength mayo, Farm fresh buttermilk, exclusively from Midwest Otters, and a shit ton of MSG. <laughs> Why not let your pet eat like true Midwesterners with a side of ranch? Surus Valley Ranch, it's utterly delicious. <laughs> oh. Man, my dog loves ranch. <laughs> it doesn't even have to. I mean, Surus Valley Ranch, I can't imagine. Speaking about doing number two on the carpet, maybe keep the ranch up. <laughs> And now, it is Prairie Legend Products, number one best-selling product of all time, the foundation on which this house was built, the perfect product for the Midwestern palate. You know it, you love it, it's D-Spicer.
let me tell you, D Spicer works great on everything and everywhere. And it works great on all kinds of foods. You know, do you love the free chips at Paradiso? But that salsa, yeah, you do, but that salsa, it's just a little too much for you. <laughs> Go ahead, D Spice it. And did your crazy Aunt Becky put jalapenos in her potato salad again? <laughs> Not again. Yeah, just go ahead. Despice it. And despicer also works great on all kinds of social situations. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know it. Has your teenage son been a little emo or goth lately? Well, you know what to do. Say it with me. Despice him. Yeah. And are your dad shoes just turning you into a sexual icon? <laughs> you know what to do. Despice them. I don't know what spice you though. Crocs or New Balances? They're pretty. They're like evenly spiced, maybe. Well, I would say the Crocs are less spicy because they have they're aerated. <laughs> like, oh, that's true. You know. No can more, it can escape. Right, exactly. Yeah. Perforate out. Are you tired of crazy, roaring motorcycles, loud tattoos, half-naked women, Ryan Hofer, and leather, leathered up dudes? No. Well, yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah. You know what to do. Despice it. D Spicer can handle those tricky political situations too. Is your governor just a little too fiery? <laughs> oh. You know what to do. D Spicer. I mean, hell, even Miles likes D Spicer. If there's anything that playing hundreds of nights at Ebenezer's has taught me, it's that Fireball is not my friend. Now, I can vouch for that. Thanks to the Spicer, I can do shots with all my friends again. I've already done 15 tonight, and I can't taste anything through my nose. <laughs> well, what do you say, Miles? You think we should show him how D Spicer works? You betcha. You guys want to see the D Spicer in action? Yeah. yeah. Lucky for you, we were going to do it anyways. Okay, I guess I get to move my own tables. This one. So, yes. Weird. Listen to him, how fancy he thinks he is. I have to move my own tables. That's right. <laughs> I'm not winning any points tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Terry girl. Now I'll go ahead and leave. <laughs> Teasing, I love her. All right. D Spicer works for all kinds of occasions. Imagine this the neighbors who just moved in down the street, imagine they're from Portland, Oregon. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and then they invite you to a dinner party. And you're leery, but hey, you're North Dakota nice, so you show up, and they serve you lobster thermidor. What the heck is lobster thermidor? I thought that was for cigars. Yeah, well, you know, I don't know what it is, and I really don't care, but I do know what to do about it. Go ahead and despice it. Now, you've got PLP's premium walleye sticks. <laughs> Caught fresh and processed right here in North Dakota. Because at PLP, we know there's only three food groups. Meat, potatoes, and walleye. Here you go, Dr. Shirley. Yeah. <laughs> and hey, did they try to feed you some kind of weird hippie salad that looks like it went to yoga class before they served it to you? Well, hey, you don't have to eat that crap. Just go ahead and despice it. Now, with a little help of the despicer, you can have what every Midwesterner wants on their table, PLP's Prairie Tots. Now in the shape of round hay bales. And did they what put... What kind of throw was that? Uh, well, you know, the wind caught it. Did you, did you play <laughs> yeah. sports when you were younger? Austin can tell you my sports we stories later. Theater, we but here, a kid. have a bun. Did they... I wasn't playing sports. I yeah, obviously. Yeah. 
You would have thought you were left-handed. Did they put out homemade, all-natural, 12-grain, cruelty-free, whole wheat dinner rolls on the table? <laughs> you know what to do. De-spice Oh. We got buns going. Some other people didn't like yeah, their buns exactly. at dinner, I think. <laughs> All any table needs is PLP's 100% plain basic white bread. Yeah. It comes in a plastic bag, and you get it at the damn grocery store. I'll keep the bread. And hey, did they open some fancy-ass bottle of wine? <laughs> with some name on it that you can't even pronounce. I can say hook and ladder. And did they want you to smell it for 12 minutes before you could even drink that shit? Well, you know you're not drinking that. Just go ahead and de-spice it. It doesn't get any better than that, America. No claims, representations, or warranties, whether express or implied, are made by Prairie Legendary Products as to the safety, reliability, durability, and performance of any POP products. Furthermore, Prairie Legendary Products and all its subsidiaries and affiliates accepts no liability whatsoever as to the safety, reliability, durability, or performance of any POP product. Basically, people, what we're telling you is, if you buy any of this shit, we don't promise it will do anything we said it would. Nicely done, guys. Yeah. Folks, our musical guest tonight has been playing music since he was in his first band, Thunderbird, in middle school. 14 years later, he's still happily at it, performing solo and playing with bands Moon Cats, The Shaky Calls, and The Prairie Wranglers. He has a record label called Savage D Productions, and he's produced over a dozen albums since 2016, which is a dozen more than Miles has done in his career. All right. His... <laughs> His videos on YouTube channel have obtained over 140,000 views. That's impressive. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Danny Savage. Thanks, Danny. Yes, thank you. Thanks. Turn your mic on. Oh, it, it's hitting. There we go. Check, there we check. Go. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Great to be here. All right. Once again, my name is Danny Savage. I'm going to be playing a song I wrote here. Um, this is a tune called Meet Me Down. It's about uh, spending time on the Missouri River Banks and hanging out with that recreation. Hope you guys enjoy. Down by the Yomazur River, I meet me down by the Yomazur River, I meet me down by the Yomazur River, and we're gonna have a good time. Meet me down by the Yomazur River, I meet me down by the Yomazur River, I meet me down by the Yomazur River, and we're gonna have a good time. Great outdoors are better out together, so throw another line, yeah, get in the water, it's fishing time, nothing much better than a catch while I ride right on the river. Meet me down by the Yomazur River, I meet me down by the Yomazur River, I meet me down by the Yomazur River. Find yourself
it's outside, you gotta go get it Cause the time it flies, soon you need a sweater When the snow it flies in the wintertime weather I'll see you out on the ice, you betcha Meet me down by the Yomazuri River I'll meet me down by the Yomazuri River I'll meet me down by the Yomazuri River tonight I know the Missouri River doesn't flow through Minot, so we're gonna change it this last time and sing Souris River. I want everybody to sing along. One, two, three, I'll meet me down by the old Souris River. I'll meet me down by the old Souris River. I'll meet me down by the old Souris River tonight. That's right. Meet me down by the old Souris River. I'll meet me down by the old Souris River. I'll meet me down by the old Souris River, and we're gonna have a good time. Thanks so much. Thank you kindly. You are excellent. Um, you guys don't know this, but now you do. Danny brought me an album out here. So you want to tell us a little bit about this album here before we move on? Yeah. I noticed that song's on here, numbers 15. So. That's right, yeah. Oh, there we are. Sorry about that. So uh, yeah, I recorded the album last year at the end of the year and got it out on January 1st. And just kind of made up some CDs, and uh, it's online as well. If you look up Danny Savage, you should be able to find it. Um, it's like 20 of my original songs, just me and a guitar acoustically. Um, a lot of times I perform as a one-man band to kind of fill extra sound, but I figured I'd strip it down to kind of get some authentic, you know, just, just myself and a harmonica, you know, on, a, on so, an album. So, Danny, I noticed yeah. you're sitting on something kind of creative. Uh, what, would, what are we looking at here? Well, it's kind of a suitcase kick drum. I actually, I made it just with a drum and a suitcase, you know, kind of cut it out and everything. And I noticed you were wearing some different clothes earlier. Are they in that box or <laughs> what's going on there? I maybe got an extra pair of socks just in yep. case. You never know, you know. Don't That's excellent. Them. Well, everybody, give it up for Danny Savage. He'll be back a little bit later. Awesome. Thanks so much. Well, folks, our guest tonight was raised in Wapaton, North Dakota, and graduated from Wapaton High School. After earning a degree in social work from the prestigious University of North Dakota and working in family psychology, he realized that his hobby of home brewing beer, that he liked his job of brewing beer better than he liked his actual job. So in 1986, when there were only 50 craft breweries in the entire United States, he took a flying leap and established what is now one of the top 25 breweries in the entire country. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Good Night Live stage the founder and CEO and self-described chief knucklehead of Summit Brewing, Mr. Mark Stutrud. <laughs> It's up to you, Jake. Yeah, well, I got to tell you guys, I've spent a few hours with this guy earlier today and I had to go home, take a nap, drink a lot of water <laughs> before I came here tonight. But this, you are really in for a treat tonight. To, Mark, I want to give you a treat while you're up here, too. Not only the finest beer for a fine individual like yourself. Uh, an old Milwaukee for you. I'm actually... So he's a... He owns Summit Brewing, and you're giving him a old mill. Yeah, and I'm he, actually going to have a Dakota Soul. Okay. So. Oh, cheers. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> At the, least you're the buying. One time only. Yep. I don't know if I want to make eye contact with you. Well, <laughs> well, Mark, when you started Summit Brewing, there were only 30 microbreweries in the whole country. And now there's like 9,800 of them. How do you stay true to who you are and what you do in an industry that's now 300 times bigger? Well, I started a brewery to reintroduce classical styles. I had this bigger vision of incorporating beer culture that I had experienced in Germany, 
and uh, other parts of the world. And we thought we should bring it back to home. I mean, prohibition really uh, decimated our beer culture. We lost touch with all the seasonal styles, uh, the special styles of beer that would go, you know, from one month to even the next. So that was the notion. It was true beer culture, if I could put it in three words. I love that. And I noticed somebody else true to culture. You have a couple um, famous guests at your table tonight. As I think you should know that our first guest ever on Good Night Live, mm -hmm. Mr. Walter Peel, is in the audience tonight. And when Walter was on stage, he told a horrifyingly embarrassing story about my youngest brother, who's also <laughs> sitting at your table, if I know right. So you can give him a round of applause, too. <laughs> so staying true to your culture, you know, we talked a little bit about how that lines up with microbreweries, but you're also in competition with big breweries. And you said that the big guys like Budweiser, Miller, Coors, they focus on one thing one kind of beer and that they really gave small breweries a void to fill. Is there still space in the beer market for everyone? Uh, I think so. But uh, when it comes to brewing, you really have to be technically sound. It, it's food manufacturing. If I'm going to sell you a shoe or a car, it has to be reliable. If you're going to be a repeat customer, you have to be trustworthy. The same thing for any kind of a food product. So, you know, going back to 1984 when I was working on getting the brewery going, and we were sodbusters. You know? mm -hmm. I use that metaphor from a very deep level. Because back in 1986 when we sold our first beer, we were competing head on with all the national brands and a couple of imported brands. And the, the biggest criticism that I was concerned about was that somebody would say, this quality sucks, right? It's got to be good beer. And also a, a master brewer, Fred Thomaser, that was a mentor to me, Im, you know, he really imprinted in my mind when we were formulating our beer that Mark, if you do a beer, it has to taste like more. Meaning that it's going to be satisfying to the point that you'll order another one. Is that why you got me four of them this afternoon? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was on Dusty's tab. So. That's right. We love that. Thank you, Dusty. <laughs> so, Mark, you're not Budweiser, and you don't seem to want to be. What is the measure of success for you? Um, See, seeing people smile, getting together, enjoying life, and adding to the community. We're deeply embedded in the communities that we're involved in. Uh, we support a whole number of uh, nonprofits, and I'll stop there. Right. I don't know how many questions you have tonight, so I'm scared. <laughs> Don't, don't worry, I've got a hard stop. I'm just going to pick you up out of your chair and bring you off when we hit there. So you just talk. Yeah, you get like a two wheel dolly, do you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, speaking of a two wheel dolly, walk us through and tell us what it was like the day that you sold your very first keg of Summit Beer. Well, after um, four years of planning and working on the brewery, going to brewing school, being mentored by two master brewers, spending six months designing extra pale ale, and at that time, that beer was totally off the grid. You know, there was no benchmark, there was no comparison, and people would say, you know, I like spice, but not this much, and they were talking about hops. Mm -hmm. And now, some people think we're mainstream, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> so, after all this work, uh, preparing ourselves. The first time that we uh, had an opening with our 20 shareholders, 
they came to the brewery and I looked at Charlie McElevey, one of my mentors, and I said, Charlie, what's gonna happen if um, people don't like the beer? He looked at me and he says, well, it's too late to pray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, we had a number of independent bars and restaurants that knew that things were happening on the East Coast and the West Coast in particular, and this was back I mean, we don't, we don't say boutique wines anymore, right? Well, I've never said that. But. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, so we were, we were really tracking what was going on in the wine industry and focusing on varietals. When I grew up in Wapiton, it's like I would go to the steakhouse with my parents and they would say, you want burgundy or white? Or, oh, do you want that burgundy chilled? Um, you know, so I mean, this this no, whole right? <laughs> so yeah. To that. <laughs> Just checking. I got to talk to the no. Severson's later. So. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure I got my wine stuff. In so, place. I mean, I mean, the the definition of beverages were really pretty focused and and narrow. So, now. Yeah. So let's back up a little bit. Um, oh dear. You were, you're a product of the hippie generation, so you could have. You know, been involved in a couple things, but why beer? Oh, uh, well, you know. Is, is it because you couldn't grow weed at the time? Or, uh, well, <laughs> I, I, I won't talk about the time that uh, I told my dad that um, I wanted to take the uh, family homestead that he was born on south of Watford City and turn it into an organic farming right. mm -hmm. commune. Commune. See, I told you. Yeah, it was a yeah. and uh, so you know, I've had some pretty wacky ideas uh, over the years. When I told him I was going to start a brewery, he just—he really thought I was off my rocker, because he finally thought I was kind of like making it. But you know, my my father was a printer, a vocational educator. Uh, he really wanted me to go to science school, not to UND. And, um, well, you can't be right about everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it's really funny where, you know, through my experience, I really grew up with this value that it's really important to make something for a living. And that was, uh, that was a part of a family value that, so I, I, I really hold my father responsible even though when I told him I was going to start a brewery and he shook his head and said, don't ask me for any effing money. Yeah. He's responsible because, you know, I mean, we obviously make some very, very nice beer. I agree. It is very nice beer. And I understand, you know, getting a little bit off topic here, but you actually made a beer in tribute to your father. Is that correct? Yes. Tell us a little bit about Saga. <laughs> Saga, Saga India Pale Ale or Saga IPA. Oh, this was uh, back in oh, 2010. We were going to, you know, have a hoppier style of beer. Uh, you know, for some of these upstarts that were saying, geez, extra pale ale, we not enough hops, and then we made a very traditional British style hop, or a British style IPA, excuse me, and and that didn't satisfy some of these hop heads. Um, so when when we um, thought about doing a more hop forward aggressive IPA, uh, there was a group of people at the brewery that everybody loved Odin, my father, and and what a great uh, name, and and. Um, they wanted to incorporate a Nordic theme and a Nordic name along with this new IPA. And they actually wanted to call the beer after Odin, but there's a little brewery, uh, Odin uh, Brewing Company in Seattle. They have a trademark. We weren't going to mess with those guys, even though they're small, we respect, we re respect their mark. So, we spent a year designing this beer, dialed the beer into the point of where we were going to get into commercial production, 
but we still didn't have another, if we didn't have a name, and it went another six months uh, through a small committee within the brewery trying to think of a name along Nordic themes. And, you know, today when you think about all the different names of beers that are out there, it, it, it's really crazy. So after six months of researching and thinking about uh, names of this new beer, and everything was rejected, we'd do a trademark search, and I'd say, no, somebody else has got that. Uh, I walked into work one morning and talked to Carrie, who was in charge of this committee for uh, the new naming um, of this beer, and I said, how's it going? She says, well, Shit, you know, the last six days of uh, all the names that we brought up, everybody's got, they're already using it. And I looked at Carrie and I said, well, this has turned out to be a fucking saga. Yeah. <laughs> now, the crazy thing about it is that saga is the Nordic goddess of poetry and music and a drinking buddy of Odin's. Wow. Excellent. So, you know, all of a sudden we have kind of a real story that comes back to the whole focus of what these guys wanted to do. Well, that's awesome. So it's not all business for you through, you know, Summit Brewing prides itself on giving back to the community. You support organizations, protect the environment, support the arts, and you maintain a close relationship with local humane society. In fact, we know that you have a rescue dog, right? Yes. A chocolate lab, if I believe? Yep, she's got a little bit of pointer in her. She likes bunnies. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about that. Well, um, we adopted um, Frankie. Um, she came from uh, Arkansas, a kill state. Uh, we adopted her through a local organization. She, literally, she was a part of a ditched litter where they threw the dogs in the ditch at five weeks. Wow. When we adopted, uh, when we adopted her, her, her name was Lollipop, and my wife wouldn't put up with that, yeah. right? So, um, so we, we adopted Frankie at 10 weeks, and she was damn near feral. Uh, she was under the bed. She was under the secretary in the front room for several months. It took a long time for... Uh, her to trust me, uh, Todd Stutrud, my cousin back there, when he first met Frankie, he was putting treats on his forehead, laying on the floor in the dining room uh, to see if, the, if Frankie would even approach him. Uh, she's come around, and um, so uh, I think over just the past couple of years uh, with the Animal Humane Society, based out of Golden Valley, uh, the brewery is directed about $35,000 uh, to that organization. Wow. They have a, a, an animal walk, and the brewery has been a kind of a starting point and an ending point, if you know what I mean, uh, to, to raise funds. So we're, we're really very, very embedded. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Causes. You know, Mark, I have about, you know, three questions left for you. But oh, dear. You've got... <laughs> You've got a lineup of beers called the Unchained Series. Yes. Um, and you allowed your brewers to make whatever they wanted. Uh, they had no budget, no restraints, and you said they could do anything so long as it didn't land you in jail. Correct. Uh, it's got to be legal. Why, it is, why is it important to give creative flexibility to your brewmasters? Well, I mean, I'm really blessed with uh, uh, a solid crew of brewers that technically know what they're doing. And going back to this um, reincorporation of beer culture is we're very focused on classical styles. Mm -hmm. You know, you and I have talked in the past where... We go way back. We have, really. I mean, I mean I've gotten to know you pretty, pretty well. Yeah, don't over. tell my wife any of this stuff <laughs> I said at lunch today. Yeah. Um, but we, we really focus on classical styles to elevate what we lost during Prohibition. And the Unchained series was pretty cool where 
a brewer would take total responsibility for not only selecting the style, but procuring all of the ingredients, uh, the yeast, everything else, their signature was on the label. And we were doing uh, three different beers every year. And it goes back to the core of elevating the appreciation uh, of, of classic, traditional styles. We, we're, we're not going to um, make beer with uh, Twinkie dust or glazed donuts. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Because um, obviously I have great taste in beer myself. Yeah, so. well, <laughs> uh, um. yeah, I was, you know, a couple of my mentors, uh, uh, brewmasters that I learned the trade from after I went through brewing school, they work for big breweries. Uh, we're not one of those small breweries that go around and criticizing the big breweries to make a sale. Wow. I've got deep respect who for... Did you, who did you start with? Who was your... You said they work for big breweries. Who were your guys that you... Oh, well, back, back in the day, um, both Schmidt and Strohs were chugging along. And I got to know the brewmasters there. They took me under their wing. Uh, one of my first mentors uh, was a fellow by the name of uh, Fred Thomaser, who is the last brewmaster at Schmidt before G. Heilman. And you're so young, you don't know this, but... Um, it's not that young. <laughs> it's, I'm sneaky old. Yeah. <laughs> but when, when another uh, company bought out Schmidt, he was kicked to the curb and forced into early retirement, and the man was marvelous. Uh, I also um, apprenticed at Red Hook Brewery out in Seattle back in 83, uh, and also uh, at a brewery in Albany, New York. And here's this guy who's an Anglophile. He's just like steeped into British real ales where everything is cask conditioned. Cask conditioned ales are still a niche. This guy started this brewery in Albany, New York in 1982 and 100% of his beer was cask conditioned ale. He lasted three years. He was so far ahead of his time that, um, and I, I, again, that's where you know, people go, oh, you go to England and the beer is flat and warm. That's not true, but it's a perception. Well, Mark, I wanted to say, you know, as we come to a close here, oh, dear. you provided this uh, Dakota soul <laughs> with the Sears Valley Animal Shelter and um, the barley's grown right here in North Dakota. Um, as you drink the old Milwaukee, I just want to know if, if I'm the only person who drinks old Milwaukee, does that make it a microbrew? <laughs> you know? But it... It's up to you. You're the beer drinker. So in closing, I want to know what's up with this whole Cicerone thing. It's, it's kind of like being a beer sommelier, and does being a certified Cicerone really make you an expert in beer? And You know, as we end here, what do you think? So what's the question? Well, does a, if, <laughs> if I sit through an online course as being a Cicerone, am I an expert? Can, can you help me? <laughs> um, I'll ask the questions. Okay. <laughs> I wish we had more time, but it's, I got to get off this stage. Um, well, you don't got to get off the stage. We got to get to the funny part next. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. Um, yeah, I tease him. <laughs> I tease. Um, you know, a, a Cicerone certification, you know, it's kind of like putting on your training wheels to where you... Usually put I, those on, on my way home. <laughs> yeah. So you've got training wheels so you can actually identify styles of beer and those attributes and then be able to talk about it. And in a number of ways, it's a, uh, a sales position. Uh, part of going to brewing school and being a brewmaster, you're trained in some pretty deep sensory analysis that's mm -hmm. more on a graduate school level. Well, Mark, we want to know how well you know your own beer. So what we're going to do, come on out, ladies, is we're going to pour you three beers, and we want to know if you can identify which one is a Summit beer. And you're going to get blindfolded, too. Yeah. Can, also, can I have some champagne to, to cleanse, cleanse my palate? 
No. Please remove your glasses. <laughs> what, what, these? Yeah, yeah we're going to blindfold you. <laughs> if you want it over the glasses. You don't think <laughs> old Milwaukee will cleanse your palate? That's a palate cleanser for me. Lord. <laughs> this will only hurt a little bit. First. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why he's standing either. But. I don't... I, <laughs> Old Melvin. Well, Jake, you got up. That's why I thought right, I should well, stand. Yeah, you can slide oh. over a little bit here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Don't peek. Oh, oh sure. Sit back I got down the down chair or? right behind you, so you can sit down. I promise. Here. You oh, good it. lord. He's not yep. gonna pull it away. I'm watching. Yep. I'm watching you, Jake. All right. Okay. So, now you are. Okay, you're gonna hand them to me, and I'll yep. just sit here and so, behave myself. This first beer, it tastes a lot like freedom, liberty. <laughs> And the American way. You, you, you are a true beer, beer connoisseur, aren't you? We'll give you a little snifter of that. Jake. It's kind of hard to get it to my nose, but... Well, I didn't put the blindfold should, should over I, your should nose. I do, should I do like the uh, Cicerone? Do it, style, I mean, or? just give me your thoughts. Oh, a touch of tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> do you drink it out of mine? It is, it, it's light tobacco. And uh, some graininess there. So what do you think? Is it a summer beer? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, this next one, one right? this next one tastes like summer days, mown grass, and Minnesota lake water. Oh, so you're, so you're, 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 you're already telling me what I'm supposed to taste. Right. Well, uh, apparently, you know, we got to get you into sensory analysis I, because you just don't set up a bias. I, I saw how much. That you, is so strong. I saw, you, I saw how much you drank that I mean, stage. I'm trying to help you out. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Okay, so this one tastes like Minnesota lake water poured through a sock. Uh, with, with, oh, oh, oh good night. So now you're cheating and everything? No, I didn't. <laughs> Come on. The, the audience knows I'm behaving. I think I tied a knot in your hair, though. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, my God. I I'm, told you we only have so much time to do this. Thing. Well, it's, I mean, it's not my show. Terry tied this, <laughs> Terry tied this knot when she tied me up. It wasn't nearly this loose. <laughs> Well, right. yeah, you need more restraint than I do, apparently, yep. but that's right. another yeah. story. That All is, right. That, so. so what do you think? Some well, beer? So, so this one here? I don't know. I'm getting a touch of burnished leather. <laughs> Maybe it's because I was sitting with Walter Peel, but I'm not sure. Maybe. <laughs> no, you'd be tasting paint then. <laughs> Is that I, Summit? No. All right. And this third one. Lord, well, you're, don't, get, don't tie me, it Tie me up here. And this third one, it tastes like dirt roads, tailgates, and cut-off jean shorts. And no dusty gravel roads. Uh, thinking uh, of yeah. Cheryl Crow. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Cheryl Crow? <laughs> All right. What do you think? What does she taste like? <laughs> <laughs> Are you giving me the same beer? <laughs> All right, so you're a little more sober than I thought. He's an expert, folks. Yeah. A real expert. Yeah, it's not a summit. <laughs> well, so what do you think? Oh. You can take the blindfold off. Oh, dear. What do you think? <laughs> this guy's on your team. I don't no. know how that happened. How did we lose him to your team already? Yeah. Well, okay, Mark, so you hate my beer, but I'm going to challenge you I, to a staring contest. I did <laughs> not say I hated your beer. If you, I've, I've been enjoying one with you because you bought tonight. Well, I tell you what. If you can beat me in a, if I beat you in a staring contest, you got to make a whole new line of beer called New Milwaukee. Go. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's give it up for Mark Stuttrud. 
master brewer and badass. Thank you for being on our stage tonight. Thanks, buddy. Yep. You're great. Thanks. Well, folks, that interview was really a lot of fun. And Mark was great, wasn't he? Yeah. So we've got just a little bit of more music and one comedy bit left for you tonight. But we want to give you all one last opportunity to open your wallets for the Sears Valley Animal Shelter. We had a blast making this Fun to Need video shorts for tonight's show. And we've got one more for you. This one features a guest star, one of Sears Valley Animal Shelter's biggest supporters, and he's in our audience tonight. Chief of Police in Berthold, North Dakota, Stand Up Officer Al Schmidt. That's right, folks. You can't see him, but give him a round of applause. Here we go with our last fun to need video, License to Thrail. We have a 1091 and a 1091A. Oh hell, we have all the 1091s. Dispatch, it's not good here. Send backup, code three. It's him. Thank God he's here. The name's Thrillkill. Jake Thrillkill. Who's in charge here? What's the situation? It's a hostage situation. Glad you're here, sir. Chaos, hysteria in there. Cats and dogs living together, real book of revelation kind of stuff. Somebody's got to do something. Well, I came here to chew matchsticks and save puppies. And I'm all out of matchsticks. Say hello to my little friend. You don't need to be an action hero to save animals. The Sears Valley Animal Shelter takes pride in rescuing animals from high kill shelters. And you can help right here, right now. It costs $100 to obtain and transport each animal, so give it up and save a puppy. All right, folks. Okay, this was our last fun to need, but if you all take a look at the doors, you will see a dozen of the faces you saved on this last transport just on Monday. Dr. Logan? All right. These were all dogs pulled from a kill list in Oklahoma that we transported here, 41 total. So if we wanna give it up for the dogs really quick. All right, folks, go ahead and raise your paddle if you want to save a dog or cat from a high kill shelter. Let's see all those paddles up. Who's going around getting numbers? Back row, you guys get to see some dogs too. They're just now coming in, just a little bit late. Keep them up. Keep them up, make sure that she's got you set up here. This is a donation of $100 will save an animal from a high kill shelter. And you can do more than one. Keep your paddles up until the nice lady in the green here has got your rote down. Did you get 312? Thank you. All right. Keep your hands up. Did you have to bring the puppies? I don't need another puppy right now. No. Mm -hmm. All right, folks, while they're gathering those last numbers, let's go ahead and bring out our musical guest for his closing number, Danny Savage. Come on out, Danny.
Danny Savage gets to follow cute puppies, everybody. That's a tough, tough road. Tough act to follow, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I grew up on uh, Lake, so Lake Sakakawea. And I know that's, that one's a little further away than the Audubon, but I figured you guys would know what ice fishing's all about. So I'm going to do a song about ice fishing. This is one I wrote called Pickled Northerns. Um, it was inspired by Pickled Northern Pike. Yeah, yeah, it's a great way to do it. So if you haven't Disgusting, tried it. Disgusting, yeah. Check it out. <laughs> Going fishing in the morning. Let's get the heater rolling. The holes, they aren't quite frozen. Yes, oh, come on, let's go then. Two Northerns in the morning. Let's throw them in a jar then. Pickle them up and wait a few. And then they're pickled Northerns. Hey, come on, let's go then. Let's make another hole then to catch another Northern to pickle up this morning. I love the pickled Northerns, especially in the morning. Let's catch a few or more then before we get a going. Make sure the heater's rolling or your toes are frozen. And get a tip up down in, we're looking for a Northern. Just to get us going, it's early in the morning. The perfect time for fishing, yeah, if the bites are catching. We're packing up the auger, the sled she's full, let's go then. Don't forget the tip-ups, you know we're going fishing. Once we get a going, fish are jumping out the hole then. We're master angler northern men, so let's catch a few before then. Danny, thank you so much for being part of our show tonight. You have been an absolutely wonderful guest. And I mean, man, you sound like Bob Dylan if he could sing. So thank you for being on our stage tonight. Give it up for Danny Savage. Thank you, sir. Well, folks, we're about ready to wrap up tonight. And we've got one final bit for you. If you're a fan of our show, you've known we've had a lot of fun with local businesses with our very popular segment if businesses had Tinder. Well, tonight, we put a new spin on the segment just for all you pet lovers in the house. So here we go, folks. Our newest bit, Pet Tinders. First up, Tommy. Can fit a whole ball in my mouth. Wait until you see what I can do with my tongue. You supply the peanut butter. You start with that one? Yeah. Coming in hot. Next up, Bud. Pros, not afraid of spiders. Can probably out drink you and good at cuddling. Cons, afraid of moths, drinks from the toilet, and doesn't hold in his farts. <laughs> Terrence. I'm looking for someone to help get me out of my shell. Maybe take things kind of slow, but don't worry, I'm always hard. <laughs> Smudge. I know when to give the paw and when to give the claw. I like someone who's playful, but then let's Netflix and purr. Zeus. I'm a real outdoorsy type. I love hunting and fishing with long nights around the campfire. And I'm big into staying healthy. I like going for runs and playing frisbee. But I'm also interested in sniffing butts and licking faces. That's his favorite. Duke Jr. I'm not like those other dogs. I'm deeply loyal and I would never leave you. Every time you yell come, I will. Check out my OnlyFans at Golden Every Square Inch. <laughs> Sammy, single mom of 11. Don't judge, everyone has a pass. I'm off the nip 
and I'm getting fixed. <laughs> Proud mama, pick is old, want to know more, just ask. Live, laugh, love. <laughs> Next up, Jakey. I'm looking to find the last crotch I'll ever sniff. Let me be your knight in shaggy armor. We can ride off into the sunset while enjoying some of my delicious turds. All right, folks, that's our show tonight. You've been a great audience. And we thank you for all the money that you've raised tonight to help support the Sirs Family Animal Shelter. You are awesome. Continue to give yourselves a great round of applause. Now, as we conclude this evening, I just want to let you know, I know we've been here for a while, but now is the opportunity to have one more beer and give the Cirrus Valley Animal Shelter a little bit of time to tally up everything that you owe them, and then make sure to go to the Grand Ballroom and pay for that, and then make sure to make a 100% deductible cash donation at the end of that as well. So we are thrilled to announce to you that our next show will be July 15th at Minot State Summer Theater. And Dr. Shirley musical. right in the front row. There's going to be some music, yeah. It's not a musical. It's not a musical. <laughs> it is going to it's be a, a full-on extravaganza. In the meantime, make sure you keep with us on, keep up with us on Facebook, Instagram, and our website, goodnightlive.com. And I want to give a big thank you to our guest tonight, musician Danny Savage and founder of CEO Summit, and founder and CEO of Summit Brewing, Mark Stutrud. And always. A big thanks to our Good Night Live creative team, executive producer Jonah Lanto, co-host Miles Barkham, Kyle Erickson, Dr. Sean Antangney, Derek Smith, Jay Jenkins, director Adam Dias, Terry Efforts, and Lance Efforts. And thank you to all of you. Good night, Minot. We love you.